Good morning, innovators, and welcome back to Stanford University here in Palo Alto, California. My name's Savannah Peterson, and we're delighted to have you here for our all-day coverage of International Women's Day at the Women in Data Science Worldwide Annual Event. Power-packed day full of brilliant women that are honestly slightly intimidating, even for me to be interviewing, but I am delighted to, in, to invite and to welcome our second guest of the day, Radhika. Thank you so much for being here. It's your first time at the show. First impressions, exciting, good? It is really exciting and it's very inspiring. It is like a family of women from all over the world and um, that special spirit that WITS has um, is, um, is really, really uh, touching the core of me and I'm just loving it, every minute of being here. Yeah, I can feel it when you say that. Mm -hmm. I noticed in my chest I almost got a little emotional showing up mm -hmm. today because it's a powerful thing. It's a yes. powerful thing to see so many brilliant, strong women who have had journeys like ours all coming together to share ideas. Speaking of coming together, you are a powerhouse really in an intersectional space within this universe. And you wear multiple hats, both on the academic side as well as the global bridge building side. Talk us through some of those. Um, absolutely. Um, I feel that this is a moment of intersectionality. For me, everything I do right now is driven by doing whatever it takes to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. These 17 goals give us a North Star right now for tackling climate change, inclusion, gender equality, yeah. making sure we are all connected, but that we leave no one behind in our world. And um, th I feel that there's a huge role in this for data science and digital innovation. And that is where I'm excited about um, coming in and bringing my community. Um, in, in terms of my hats, one yeah. hat is um, co-president of Stanford Angels and Entrepreneurs, uh, which is a community of about 3,000 alumna, students, uh, faculty come together in order to advance um, kind of help society as well as our own Stanford community here. Mm -hmm. And we look to advance tech innovation entrepreneurship and we are also like a family. Uh, another mm. hat also at Stanford is um, I chair the Tech and Innovation Advisory Group for the Human Rights and International Justice Center at Stanford University. Wow. And I'm a fellow there. And I feel this is a moment to really think about rights, dignity, and I'm um, very proud of the work of the center. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a third hat in academia, jumping across the San Francisco Bay. I I'm a Berkeley and California, uh, Stanford alum. And, uh, so oh, you're really giving the Bay Area a lot of love. That's and, great. <laughs> uh, and I was going to say, uh, my Cal hat uh, yeah. across the Bay is um, I am on the board of an organization called the Center for Effective Global Action at UC Berkeley, uh, doing um, brilliant work, bringing together data scientists, economists, some of the most brilliant academic minds from all the West Coast schools uh, together in order to bring the power of data wow. science and uh, research to alleviate global poverty, working with uh, policymakers around the world, NGOs. So that is my policy data science world hat. And, wow. uh, and uh, I love the intersectionality. And more recently, I'm very excited about two initiatives where building bridges between these brilliant minds in Silicon Valley, in, in Berkeley, Stanford, the mm -hmm. business world here, and the rest of the world, um, one of them is via the United Nations. The United Nations um, is um, in every part of the world and, uh, and championing the SDGs. Yeah. And this bridge building can make a huge change to bring the power of digital innovation, but also some of the other resources from this part of the world. And for us to learn more about other parts of the world. So one such initiative is the United Nations Joint SDG Fund Breakthrough Alliance, which I'm a founding co-chair of along with fellow Stanford alumna, Keith so Coleman impressive. from Hollywood. And what we are looking to do there is to bring the power of technology media markets from our world, from our country, to build bridges with the rest of the world in order to collectively create awareness about the sustainable development goals, but also the fund itself looks to catalyze the impact investing to achieve these goals. So we bring um, investors, impact investors, philanthropists, uh, yeah. academics all together for catalytic dialogues on what is needed to be done and what can we all do together. 
And a final organization I like to mention, which I'm extremely excited about, is, is very nascent, is just getting launched, is the, is the um, SDG Digital Transformation and Sustainability Solutions Lab. Um, this one was just announced at COP28, um, where uh, myself um, and uh, fellow Stanford alum Claudia Kogut, who is, um, she, she heads the, uh, she's a co-founder of the Stanford Alumni and Sustainability Club, and one of the leading impact investors, founder, CEO of uh, Pegasus Capital Advisors, we are starting this initiative, anchored within Pegasus, some capital advisors, and some of the brilliant professors uh, from Stanford, including uh, Professor uh, Emerita Margot Gerritsen, have uh, joined wow. the advisory board. And we are looking to build bridges to bring the power of data science um, and digital innovation to come together and pull in students and solve some of the biggest problems in the world, working with Pegasus advisors, um, such as uh, UNDP Gold Standard and many others, and uh, seeing what we can do collectively to tackle some of the great challenges of our times. Wow, okay, so first of all, incredible. Thank you for all that you do. Those are five very different but, but important hats that certainly intersect in a variety of different ways. Given your lens, how important is it that we collaborate across borders, across agencies, across genders and ages on our collective global sustainability goals? Absolutely critical. In fact, um, in my talk at WIDS, I was saying that that is one of the most important things right now if we are to achieve the sustainable development goals and, right. and tackle the great crisis of our times. And, uh, and also to do that, collaborate in a manner where we think of each other as equals, whether it's an indigenous woman from mm -hmm. the high Andes or some of us sitting here in this beautiful place, we are all in this together, whether we like it or not, right? And yeah. if, if we collaborate as equals, hearing each other's voices with a seat at the table for those indigenous women, for those um, the Rohingya refugees in their camps um, and uh, a girl in sub-Saharan Africa, all of us come together we can do anything, and this is what I think um, digital innovation and data science enables for us to actually collaborate from wherever we are, whichever corners of the world we are. And Dig in there a little bit more. How, do, mm. how does data science and digital innovation empower that exact collaboration? Absolutely, and before that I wanted to mention that there is a goal, a goal 17, partnerships for the goals, and your question relates to that, and mm -hmm. I believe that is the most important goal right now. Um, and and it, it kind of, in a sense, wants us to collaborate, putting away the biases of our minds and coming together as global mm -hmm. citizens. And uh, data science and digital innovation can make a huge difference. I want to talk about one initiative here at Stanford um, um, that could enable that. This is the, the um, participatory decision making uh, platform and the um, online deliberation platform. What this does is people can not just get their voices heard from wherever they are using mobile phones, whatever, whatever device they have, but they can input into micro decisions. For example, in a city budget, now we don't have to just rely on our council members. We can each vote on every micro decision in the budget, but this can be applied to anything. And um, this is a project I would wow. love to see uh, a large organizations uh, embrace and bring collective voices um, to get us all heard, but also to participate. And the deliberative polling uh, platform is very powerful. It enables mm -hmm. us to debate things with very, even if you have polarized views, listen to each other, come together, and, uh, and the technology actually makes sure everyone gets a voice and how does it time. do that now i gotta dig in because we're here we yeah. just voted it was just super tuesday in california i worked the polls yeah. and and I'm, I'm all about it and and there's obviously mm. lots of tense conversations right now lots of interesting yeah. deliberation and discourse yeah how how does digital innovation help there yeah it, it helps us be objective it helps us at a minimal listen to the other side right and and right now we are feeling so polarized I feel the same way all of us feel so strongly in right. this moment of election, right? right? But I think if we use technology, it helps us slow down for a moment, but it also, the key thing is not talking over each other, not drowning out each other's voices. And it, this platform that I mentioned enables that. But also, in other, other forms of technology, helps us, if we pause for a minute, and if we look at data before we answer a question, 
It enables us to put away our biases and come in with an objective mind. Yes, we all have different views, different mm -hmm. values, but at least if we pause for a second, we, we might be more receptive to other ways of thinking. There, there was a project I was involved here at Stanford um, around understanding the biases of our minds. It was looking at the investor ecosystem. Are there racial biases in how funds get allocated? And we found that race does impact how at the top level in the, the investment industry, how yeah. they get allocated. But the professor who was part of the study, Jennifer Eberhardt, has a book, Biased. It is like a Bible, I read it. And for me, it made me aware I have my own biases, but, but the reason I bring it up is she, she posits that we can tackle our biases, and even a little bit of slowing down and being asked questions makes us think, pause for a second, and that itself, for a large percent of us, can slow down and uh, make us put our biases aside for a bit. And so this is, these are the ways, if you brought technology, to make us slow down and think for a second in the debates. Yeah. Not just give um, air time to other people. We can have much more constructive conversations and come together. Yeah, I love just the notion of that our pace can affect our bias is pretty earth shattering. I literally just made a note to read that book now. Thank you for sharing that. I, it, slowing down does make us take a breath. It's easy to get fired up and passionate and adrenaline mm -hmm. kicks into our brains where we go into a defensive mode if someone doesn't mm -hmm. share our opinions. And I think there's something really, really special about that. I was thinking about that a lot at the polls because it's a non-electioneering, you, know, you can't electioneer, right? So yeah. no one can really share their politics. But in that moment, it's awesome because you can feel the energy still. Yeah. Everyone's excited. And yet there's this kind of palpable energy that isn't tarnished by sharp comments and, mm -hmm. and, and inappropriate discourse. So yeah, I think that's super awesome. You said something to me earlier when we were getting ready that really is gonna stick with me probably long after this interview. You wanted to talk about holistic sustainability, which to you includes inclusion. Absolutely. There is, to me, there is no sustainability without inclusion. And the spirit of the UN Sustainable Development Goals is to leave no one behind. That is inclusion. That is a core mm -hmm. tenet on which they are based. And to me, sustainability is climate change, a sustainable way of living where we nurture our planet and don't destroy it. But also, it is having voices at the table. It is making sure that women are treated as equal, people of color are treated as equal. Mm -hmm. It is ensuring that every human being can live a dignified life, have access to basic resources like education, food, healthcare, water, livelihood, because that is sustaining humanity. Um, mm -hmm. It is making sure that uh, life on land and underwater is conserved, and these are all the goals, and that is, that is why they're called the 17 Sustainable Development Goals the recognition by all world leaders, and most world leaders, that these are connected, that they are not isolated. And uh, to me, especially, inclusion is the core thread that we need to not uh, lose sight of. I really, I really couldn't agree more. I judge the Consumer Electronics Show Human Sustainability for All Category based on the same 17 goals. And it's amazing to see the different types of innovation that the world is creating around, uh, in multiple different countries around these goals. Do you think that digital innovation and data science is going to make it easier for the world to adopt the SDG goals? I, I say it goes both ways because, uh, I mean, five years ago, yeah. being a computer science graduate from Stanford and being in the world of tech and a huge believer in the scalable solutions, non-linear scalable solutions tech can bring, I would have said absolutely yes. Now I say that it goes both ways. Yes, it is a very powerful mm -hmm. accelerant of the goals and we can do amazing things if deployed right. But I would also say that I am terrified by the growing digital divide that technology is creating in the world, but also some of the challenges uh, happening. The, our youth has a mental health uh, pandemic and uh, I do think uh, social media plays a role. So, but, but to answer your question, if we do things right, if we intentionally deploy technology to help society, I think it could be one of the most powerful factors in achieving the SDGs. We are so behind on achieving these goals. And I think this is the, the catalyst yeah. we need right now. And this is why one of the reasons I'm 
hoping to pull in some of the brilliant minds in my world to work with the UN to bring that positive power of technology in, in a thoughtful, responsible manner to achieve the goals. I think that was so beautifully stated. I cannot wait to cut that out for a sound bite for the show. How, what can we do, you and I as leaders, folks listening to the show, anyone involved in this, to combat the digital divide? Because I could not agree with you more. I think change begins at home, right? We think the digital divide is only mm -hmm. in sub-Saharan Africa, in the rural villages of Bangladesh or India. Right. No, it is everywhere. It is right here in our backyard in Palo Alto, right? Mm -hmm. it, there is a difference in what access children in the schools in Palo Alto or East Palo Alto have. It is happening totally. everywhere in every corner of the world. And I think the only way to combat it is um, recognize it and bring it front and center. And as we bring digital innovation to um, advance our world yeah. at every step, making sure that there is digital equity and, and thinking and uh, brainstorming what does it take. And when we brainstorm, we, we want to have those voices, the youth of East Palo Alto at the table yeah. in brainstorming what is it going to take in solving those problems. And, um, and I think we can, but it's, it's a change in mindset, I think much needed in this moment, seat at the table for the for even those of us who are well-meaning and want to make a change, we sometimes forget that we have no clue what it's going mm -hmm. to take to make that change. So seat at the table, seat at the table for whom we consider beneficiaries of the inclusion and listening to them and having them lead and co-design solutions. I, I, keep, I, I feel like we're at a spoken word experience. I would keep wanting to give you snaps. Everything you've said is just is, is so spot on. It hits me in the chest as a woman and, and a leader, and I'm, I'm grateful for you saying it. I think one of the things, too, I was advising my LinkedIn audience this morning, what can they do to be an ally to women like us today? I said, acknowledge your privilege. Acknowledge yeah. that there are people around you not having the same experience that you're having and think about how yeah. you could be more inclusive in that. Last couple of questions for you as we wrap up. What would be your, uh, you're obviously inspiring me on the stage. I'm sure you're inspiring mm -hmm. other folks listening <laughs> at you. home and around the world right now and, and at the virtual event for WIDS here. What would be your advice to a woman of any age, frankly, considering a career in digital innovation and data science? My advice would be believe in yourself. Demand that seat at the table, especially in the tech industry. It is, it is not that easy. There are intangible barriers, uh, tangible barriers. Believe in yourself, surround yourself with people who believe in you. Find those mentors, mm -hmm. but, um, but don't be afraid to challenge the system and, uh, and uh, demand, demand, demand for what is due. Don't let anyone undermine yourself. That happens in the digital innovation world, in the tech industry, everywhere. Um, it is not that different. Right, it's a cross sector. Very well said. One more question for you in that same vein. What would be your advice for allies looking to empower women in our space? There are so many amazing allies, and especially I love the, the men allies. Mm -hmm. um, and they feel deep empathy. Mm -hmm. They do amazing things. Yet I would say that um, nothing substitutes the experience of being a woman. So also step in the shoes, talk to us women, talk to many women, and, um, and try and understand our world. And that can yeah. make them even more effective. And um, thank you to those allies who want to be there. And, um, and um, yeah. let us welcome them. We really need that. Yes, we absolutely do. And last, but those are great answers. Last but not least, question for you. Are there any women that were very instrumental in your journey that you would like today to thank today here on International Women's Day? There have been uh, many amazing women who have um, helped me with my journey and had a huge role in what I do today. Um, instead of working in the world of tech, I now work in the world of building bridges for positive change in our world. Mm -hmm. uh, one woman is Heather Grady, Vice President at the Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors who met me in a tech party and dragged me to New York to meet people at the UN. And thanks to her, I'm doing a lot of things with the UN. Another amazing mentor has been Miriam Rivera, um, founding CEO of Ulu Ventures, um, a Stanford alum, who has been an amazing role model in difficult times, um, in good times, and who by her passion for funding diverse entrepreneurs and supporting women, kind of truly kind of walks the talk and that inspires me and so many other women. So I really wanted to acknowledge Miriam Rivera and Heather Grady. And, and a woman I've never met, 
Amina Mohamed, the, the number two woman at the UN, Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohamed, is an amazing voice of change and of inclusion, so I am deeply inspired by her as well. Wow. Well, mm. thank you so much, Rudy. Again, shout out to all of those brilliant yeah. women in your life. And thank all of you for tuning in to this absolutely inspiring a full day of coverage from Women in Data Science Worldwide annual event here in Palo Alto, California at Stanford University. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for empowered women in tech.